from cloud. Okay, so a, a very late start, but welcome to the Jenkins governance meeting for June 1st. Uh, we have, uh, I'm gonna get this wrong again, Basil and myself. Um, and I guess we have some news to go over. Yeah, so um, two areas of news. First, um, the 2.346.1 LTS uh, has been delayed a few weeks to offer some time to address regressions, um, but we've got some additional content coming in. We just finished the second round of backporting today. Um, many thanks to Alexander Brandes for doing these backports. And we're looking like it's in good shape for 2.346.1. Uh, on the weekly side, we've been doing some improvements to the Docker images and a lot of UI regression fixes that have been in flight. So many thanks to everyone that has been developing and reviewing and testing regression fixes. Uh, it's been truly inspiring to me to see all of this community effort going into stabilizing this release. Um, so that's been in flight in the weeklies. Um, a couple of smaller changes in the weeklies that might otherwise go by and noticed are that we finally disabled the AND class loader by default, which was a, a long-standing project from last year. Um, is that going to affect end users at all, or is it just internals? No, it's all it's all internals. Um, although there is a uh, an escape patch in case it causes any unforeseen regressions, but it should uh, should not cause any problems as far as we know. So it's purely internal change, but. Um, so there's that, and then there's also um, the the only other thing that I felt interesting enough to mention was that I noticed the other day we're still running on an older version of Juice, and could use some help upgrading Juice to the newest version. People who are regulars to Jenkins core development might recall that we were behind on Guava for a very long time. So uh, I would hate to see this being year one of another decade of us being behind on Juice. Um, so it would be great if, uh, if anyone was interested in trying to complete that upgrade. Um, that's that's an, an area that we're starting to fall behind in. But other than that, the uh, the weeklies are looking great. So, so for people like me who don't know what Juice is, what does Juice do, and how can people help with this? Well, it's the it's a way of injecting Java classes into other Java classes. It's a, it's a dependency injection system to allow one Java class to access an instance of another Java class at one time. And it's what, actually one of many such dependency managers that we have in core. We've also got another one called SASPAS that does a similar thing. Um, and I think the, um, you know, the, like, like with all of these older parts of Jenkins, uh, there's not a lot of knowledge left from the original authors of the code. So this is kind of an area where um, being able to read the code and explore and, and, and teach yourself context from the existing comments and from the existing commit history and from the existing code, you know, that's going to be a very valuable skill to have. And you know, that's an area where there probably won't be too many people left that can help but once, once someone does build up that context, we could then kind of recover from where we left off and make sure that it gets passed down from one person to the next going forward. So there's a, like, like with the ant class loader stuff, there's a lot of historical research there that uh, I think would be needed to, to work. And that's what makes it a non-trivial um, thing to, to upgrade. Yeah, there's also, uh, testing, I assume, would be a great for people who can run. There's a Docker image for running PR testing, but you know, Windows never gets enough testing. So anyone who has, who can just volunteer some time to run the builds, it's probably also very useful. Yeah, yeah. In this case, the um, the automated core PR tests failed on the upgrade, so it was something that we caught very quickly, rather than yeah. you know doing manual testing. But manual testing would not hurt either for something like that. Cool. So for the project side, uh, oh, I wanted to pause there. Did, did you want to talk about any news more, Gavin? Uh, I don't have any news for this week. Um, nothing comes to mind. I'm cool. a little not organized as I usually am. So yeah. Okay. 
Uh, so for the on the project side, we're getting closer to June 21st, the June 21st weekly, which is when we plan on requiring Java 11. And unlike the AMP class loader change, that will affect end users. Um, we are looking pretty good for delivery on that date. Um, there was a blocker bug that we discovered that has been fixed and backported. Um, so we're looking, we're looking to be in good shape for that from the perspective of core. And another small announcement is that we're planning on taking Java 17 out of preview mode uh, at the same time. So I will be planning to have full support for Java 11 and uh, and, set, and preliminary support for Java 17 and upgrading from upgrading Java 17 from preview mode into um, something that we would feel more confident recommending that people use. So um, we're not we're not going to recommend anyone use 17 yet, but if they are using 17, it probably should work. Yeah, and not only that, my my experience has been that 17 is typically more stable than 11 in all of the testing that I've done. Cool. Um, for example, this blocking bug that we discovered that had to be worked around in pipeline Groovy and script security, that only affected Java 11. Um, and in fact, what I, I did on in stream intro, was- I know Infra got hit by that as well, so. Yeah, yeah. So what, in fact, what I did upstream was to backport the change from Java 17 down to Java 11. So I think oh, nice. for the most part, I would expect 17 to be more stable, but I think 11 has had more testing. Yeah. So basically my plan is, I think we are recommending that people use Java 11, but if you run into a problem, it may very well be fixed in 17. So I think the, the key one is we no longer have to tell people not to use 17. Right, yeah. right. Um, the other part of the Java 11 work is this uh, JAXB removal. So JAXB was removed in uh, Java 9, I think. Um, and we've had to adapt a lot of plugins that were relying on it. So there's three left that have more than 500 installations that have not been adapted. Um, notification plugin. I've been working with the maintainer who has already merged the pull request, but is struggling to release it. So hopefully we should get that released soon. I think it's just a matter of resetting the credentials uh, with SLO C count. I'm going to adopt that plugin myself and then merge and release the fix. Uh, so that should be taken care of soon as well. Then there's HPE ALI plugin and we got a response from the maintainers and they plan on adding Java 11 support by the end of June, which goes well with our dates that we've picked. Um, so I think we're in good shape for JAXB compatibility uh, for any plugin with more than 500 installations. And for the, uh, the plugins with fewer than 500 installations, we have submitted pull requests in many cases, but sometimes these pull requests have been ignored. So if these pull requests don't get fixed by September, we're most likely just going to deprecate those plugins uh, formally, uh, but still give people some, still give the maintainers a little bit more time to update them. So that's really all I have for I'm projects. I'm totally on board with killing all the, all the plugins. I, they cause a lot of support, both in the plugin site and the form stuff. So anything that's been long abandoned and not used, I think we should be more aggressively killing. Yeah, and there's a, there was a great example of that recently with um, one of the front end changes to improve form validation. Um, we did a code search and discovered that it would break a very old plugin. And as part of, of improving that form validation, we're going ahead and deprecating that plugin. I don't remember the name offhand now, but there's a lot of examples of that. And I think it's a good um, pattern of development that we're starting to see. Um, where it's all right to evolve core and to leave certain plugins behind on a case-by-case -case basis, yeah. um, but, but um, along with leaving them behind, communicating that through a formal deprecation is a good way to set users' expectations. Yeah. And I think we, I mean, as a group, we also need to push uh, pipelines more because I think a lot of those old plugins are designed because pipeline didn't exist. 
So right. like there are integrations that are just freestyle in nature that don't make any sense in pipeline and you can work more flexible in pipeline, but they still exist and people use them. So I think we can do a better job of being, hey, get yeah. learn learn new things. Not you're wrong. I want to stress that freestyle is not wrong, but we could do a better job at being, hey, these things are going to be make your life easier. Yeah. You know, I think um, uh, some of our some of our users have a lot of jobs running on older job types, and it can take a long time to rewrite these older jobs. But it's like you said, it's an exercise that's well worth doing from a supportability perspective. Yeah. Cool. So that's all I have on my side. Yeah. So I can cover the other two topics here, not as well as Mark could. It's kind of, I'm kind of, I miss Mark already, but he's just taking a week off to spend with family. So you can't really, you know, complain. Um, so she, she code Africa, uh, the contribute on is now complete. Uh, there were a couple of posts on the like retro type posts on the forum. So people posted, you know, what they learned, you know, what they get, what skills they gained, who they are, that kind of thing. They're very nice to see. Um, and I guess if Mark wrote a, a comment here, he's going to write up a, a complete blog post for the end or for the, like a wrap up. Uh, we also, summer Google, summer code, we had uh, the four projects um, selected. They've started to kick off. Um, there's, they're currently in discussions of essentially where they're going to be doing most of the communication. It sounds like there's a split between um, Gitter, more Gitter, Gitter channels and a couple Slack, so in the CDF Slack. Um, but you know they are moving forward, and you know all the mentors are very excited. And then for uh, for um, forums and community topics, I don't really have anything this week. Uh, there was a call out on the forums for uh, any help topics people had. So I'm going to just skim this really quickly while we're waiting. Uh, shoot, I lost it. We'll, we'll, I'll add the, I'll add the, uh, I'm going to add links for Shiko Zaster for these posts. And then there's one I saw that with people who are just looking for help. Yeah. So if anyone has blog posts, uh, oops. All out for YouTube videos, blog posts. Uh, learnings. But otherwise, it's been fairly quiet on new content, a lot of questions. Um, I'm expecting our June 21st one will be a messy forum stuff, but mostly we just tell people to upgrade and we should be good. Yeah, yeah. Upgrade, as usual, we'll upgrade the plugins both before and after upgrading core. Yeah. I think that's really the big message. But. Yeah. And yeah, so I don't have anything else this week. It's been a pretty quiet week. Great. Oh, there was, oh, the other thing is infra news. Uh, where are we? We're going to put it at the top. I don't, uh, infra had a couple outages last week. Infra had a couple outages. Uh, make sure, so we got to make sure that we uh, status.jenkins.io needs more visibility. Um, don't know how. Yeah, and many thanks to Tim and Damien yeah. for quickly working through, uh, and all the infrastructure team for quickly working through the release problem that we had uh, this morning. Um, so if we've released the weekly successfully. Oh, nice. Wonderful. I didn't even know about that one. Um, and then uh, package. Uh, yeah, so I gotta I gotta actually say this out loud, not just write it down. Uh, update. So updates. Jenkins IO had an outage this week. Uh, as far as I understand, it has something to do with the signing certificate, not pre CPS, but the actual internal signing. Um, that got tracked down and uh, fixed up. But there, you know, it did happen. And then packages of Jenkins IO and mirrors of Jenkins IO, they got moved into our normal infrastructure um, with the actual the mirroring software that actually 
does mirror properly. Um, There's a few issues to do with HTTPS there. They got fixed relatively quickly, but you know there was an outage and it didn't get documented. So yeah, it was a good good week for everyone. But we do uh, we did find that a lot of people just didn't know how to look at status. It's not something that breaks very often. So we got to figure out a way to make that more clear. Yeah, I see. So, so the so the status page was up to date, but people weren't able to find it or didn't know that it existed. Is that yeah, your point? pretty much. Yeah, so we have the status page. It keeps track of all the different stuff that infra exists, and there was an a, an issue with package. You can see, yeah, we had the various things but no one knows it exists this page because we don't have very many outages. No one knows to check this when there are issues. And probably updates is in here as well. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I, don't there was, I don't know if we're linking to this anywhere, but yeah, that was one thing on Gitter someone said is like, we should probably put a link to it on Jenkins.io. You know, I don't really know what else we do. Any ideas for anyone? There's, I mean, there's only two of us on this call, but if anyone's reading, watching this later, uh, any up, any suggestions on how to improve that communication pipeline? Be pretty good. Yeah, well, we could have a, like a, a dedicated Twitter account for status updates, but that yeah. might be overkill. Yeah. Yeah. I well, mean, hopefully I also, we don't need it too often. Yeah, I mean, the number of actual issues is they're usually generally pretty low just needs a restart once in a while this last week has been a little bit rough but then it goes past there it's like 225 days ago you know 30 days ago and most of them are just issues with the the, the main ci service which is just gets so much traffic right or an artifactory that we don't we don't maintain right yeah okay, well yeah i don't go i don't have anything else you no, thank you so much. Okay, I'm gonna end the recording now, I think, somehow. And no, I don't wanna do this. I'm just gonna end the meeting. So, bye.